Brushing is violence and so All right. So, Emma, are you going to introduce me? Let's like We're let's live. get this right. You're... We're live right now, Karina. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are live with Ego Condor. I am Eva Nijowska. And I am Khalil Calabas. And we are here today with Grandmother Karina, all the way from Canada, British Columbia. Say hello, Grandmother Karina. Hello. I love you, too. Thank you so much for being in partnership. Oh, thank you so much for being here with us. We're so excited to uh, have a beautiful conversation and connect with your wisdom and just uh, be in presence for you. Be mindful and, and be here with you. Hey, thank you. So I'm going to share with you two the traditions of being an elder and why elders are so needing to be reclaimed as the gems and the hidden jewels of villages and communities. And so my intention is also to share where elders fit in the blueprint of, of the vision for partnership, for family, for a village, and for a larger community called the planet Earth. So does that feed into your need to hear from me today? Absolutely. We're open heart and open minded. Thank you. Nahe. So mira nimi on karina sarinen. Mira on suomalainen tyttö. I am from Finland in my lineage. I carry the medicine of the golden reindeer moon lodge. So we have to put up our antlers and realize that we have these antenna and that we can attune to the stars and that we can attune through our fontanelle to 13 moons and to the seasons of the sun. And so because we are northern ones, we sit on the north in the medicine wheel. And once upon a time, I was initiated to the medicine wheel being around the planet. And this is my shield of self-esteem, self-worth, self-acceptance, self-respect. And I want you to take a look at this because many partners and families and villages don't have a vision they don't have the sacred geometry of the equidistant cross. They don't realize that we're really rising from the center of the fire. And we're in opposition to those who are opposite us, either reacting against being suppressed by, which is currently what's happening on the planet, or holding the tensegrity, the integrity. And so given the context right now on the planet, it's really crucial that elders step forward, that we step forward with our visions, with our missions from the galactic core, with our rememberings that we are the star elders and that we are here to recognize young couples like you. We're here to recognize you as progenitors, that there is a potential when you see the womb of this beautiful Ewa, that you would bring forth the new species for planet Earth. And so therefore, we're seeding our fierce faith and our acknowledgement in young people like you so that the children would be raised in this way, not in the way of rectangular houses for the Northern people. My Inui brothers and sisters said, you know, when they moved us from our igloos, from our circles and our spirals up and our little smoke holes through which we could see the heavens and they put us in rectangular houses and said, well, we're doing something for you. They actually took away part of our soul because for us, the rectangular house was like a coffin. So just take a deep breath and realize that the architecture of the indigenous wisdom is a crucial expression of the externalization of We live from that place of architecture. There is a divine architect within us. And I realized when I was touring the lands of the condors in Peru and Bolivia last September, October, that in fact, there is an invocation where we say in Lakota teaching, Wankantanka, Holy Ones, Great Spirit that moves to all that was in the Peruvian Andean culture in the condor lands, we say Wiracocha, Wiracocha, and we call on the Great Spirit. And so what's missing is not only the architecture and elders willing to bring back the architecture, but the contemporary voice of young people who are now, according to the rainbow prophecy, seeking out the red ones, but not only the red ones. Those of us who carry the white in the north carry an indigenous consciousness as well. And so who am I is a big answer. And we don't have time for me to give all of the who I am because the I am is really quite amazing. I am a full circle woman 
my genetic predisposition has been to shamanism. When I was initiated to my Reiki mastery and then sought out the Dharma teachings in Canada, the Tibetan Buddhist lineages, I was told by most venerable Namjo Rinpoche, do not take me as your root guru. You will go deeper than that. Do not take me as your teacher. I am your fellow voyager. And I had this trepidation of, oh my God, you know, this man is like 14 to 20 years my elder. And I bowed down and he's taken the robes and he sacrificed the love of his life in order to take the robes and the bodhisattva vows. And he is the first acknowledged awakened Canadian. But not only that, he's acknowledging me as his equal. And so that is a serendipitous moment. And I invite everyone, both of you and others who will listen to this, to recognize serendipity is an operative principle of how the universe creates. That we are creating through our mindfulness, through our practice, through our breath, but also through the echolocation of our ancestors who come from right behind us, from our mother's line and from our father's line. And these most compassionate ones are saying, look you two, you are getting married in April. You are the sacred partnership that is the promise of the most precious ones. Your ancestors said, get married to each other and do this work. You are the eagle and the condor. You are the butterflies meeting. You are the hawks giving messages. You are the robin red breasts remembering beyond crucifixion is the breast of the arising sun. You are the, the doves of peace. In the Kiro tradition, we say, may there be peace of the dove in your heart. So in my travels, what I've been looking at is what are the universal principles? When I was at the Eagle Quetzal Condor gathering in Sedona two years ago in April, there was a dispensation given to us and it was called an urgent proclamation by a Guatemalan Mayan elder. And he was a teacher and his wife had been a midwife in their village. Very, very humble people. And he listened to the gathering in the elder's arbor. And then he stood up and he said, all of this rhetoric is fine, but where's the action? What are we going to do as indigenous cultures? And I read through two pages of the proclamation, made 20 copies as soon as I came back to British Columbia, wrapped them with the red yarn, and I blessed them with tobacco in my heart. And I said, whoever creator, you want to have this proclamation be given to, I will give it. And what I discovered is that I've only given five away because people are not ready to hear the proclamation covered in Standing Rock, that there's been a divisiveness in the root cultures. There's been a division and separation amongst the native tribes. And so our beautiful young people who come with naivete to our arbors of peace, whether in northern BC or other parts of the world, they come with a, a naivete. They come with an innocence. I, I want to help the environment and you're my root teachers and you're the indigenous ones and you're my elders and I lay myself down and let me serve you. But the elders are still divided. The grandmothers are still carrying a wound that hasn't been fully cleared. The grandfathers, thank God, the Mishomases are showing up more and more, and so are the grandmothers. But on the second page of the proclamation was this calling. Until all tribes of the planet realize one tribe, one nation, one earth, one tree under which we can all take refuge, we will have as a reflection on this shield an oppositional force. We will lack integrity because we're standing too much in one camp and not holding the center pole of fire. And so this prophecy says, stand in the fire of love. Whenever there's tension between you and another, retreat. Go back into the fire and purify yourself. Don't argue. There's no right or wrong or good or bad. You'll never win because there'll always be a loser and you will never know what unconditional love is, what fierce love is. And so just remember that. It's a good heads up for you in your partnership and in your marriage in April. So the second thing is learn to recognize that life is a wheel. It's a Dharma wheel. It's a wheel of purpose. And that when you're in between the cardinal directions, 
when you're between the element of air and fire, that in that transmutative point, there is an opportunity to go back and regress. That's psychological regression. So even though you may be 43, the reality is if you're moving from your mind down to the fire of your creativity and your sexuality, that's a long way to drop. And it may seem like a big descent. And we have not fully mastered descent because in our European-based culture, in our white culture, in our conglomerate rock of North America and the eagle, we have forgotten that the vision must descend. The vision must be swallowed every day with the kipus, with the coca, with the medicine. When we eat the peyote, when we, when we drink the ayahuasca, when we take the root of the boga, when we smoke the mapacha, we're saying, I want this vision to go deep inside of me. I want every gland to vibrate in the divine order of I am this vision. And so it's a, a mutually responsible time right now. It's not a gender oriented. It's not a white, black, blue or purple time. It is a time to hold the whole, a time to hold the oneness and to go back to the original geometry through which we can calculate equidistance. I am equidistance from you and from me. I'm sitting in my equanimity. Therefore, I'm not afraid of losing you and you need not be afraid of losing me. That's the second counsel for sacred partnership. Be not afraid. I will always be with you and I've always been with you. For I am the voice of great spirit that brought the two of you together and always raise yourselves to the higher point of you. That only in one is shall ye become in communion and be wholly married. Wholly married first to yourself and then to each other. So these are all parts of the sacred geometry. It comes from the purification of that central fire. It comes from elders who have purified. Mas grande purificado. So last year when I was in Peru and, uh, and Bolivia, I received this transmission when I was on Isla del Sol in uh, Lake Titicaca, an, an otro lugar que es muy, muy simpático con indígena, but the ancient, ancient, ancient ways. And so when we carry this vision and this resonance, whoever is in front of us is carrying a message, as I'm carrying a message. So my Imara young brother, the chief of his community, he took the eagle feather that my son had gifted me from British Columbia before I went to Peru, and he took his eagle, his condor feather, and it matched exactly. Serendipity, synchronicity, the synthesis, the photosynthesis of trees, bringing us to light, bringing us to this place where the eagles can land with the condors and can ground and look at each other and go, now you are my son because your condor feather matches the eagle feather of my son. And he said, hey, I am your son. I'm chief of this village. And I said, huh? And now I'm grandmother of this village. Now, what would happen if we walked down the main street of any city in North America? And we went up to the local mayor and said, well, you're the chief and I'm the grandmother. I'm dreaming you and I'm dreaming the vision. And this needs to be created in City Hall. <laughs> we need to look at this instead of a house of parliament made of rectangular buildings. We need to look at the roundness of life. We need to look at what is diametrically opposed and hold that as an integrity and hold that and go, okay, there's no personality here. We're both going through purification. There's no right or wrong. And so these teachings are, it's, it's like there's nothing else like this teaching. I am so passionate about transmitting this teaching and these views that I can't think of anything else I would rather do at 70. And when I look at people say, oh, you're a senior citizen. I said, no, I'm not. I'm an elder. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean to be a senior citizen? It means I've retired. I am more fully employed now than I ever was. <laughs> My students say to me, you are 24 seven grandma. And I said, that's right. The easiest way to get it is come and sleep on my floor. Come and share my tent with me. Come and sleep in the same yurt. Come and dream in the same way. And that is really the where the action is at. We're dreaming and we're waking up from a nightmare. And some of us are waking up into a nightmare, but we created it. It's all our creation. It's, it's totally wondrous. It's an amazing time. 
I, you know, when the when the election happened, I was just back from Peru, and I purposely wanted to be back in Canada when the election was on. And uh, people looked at me and said, "Well, what do you think of the results?" I said, "I have no thought. As this is the mirror. This is the fractal of the universe. We created this. This is seven generations back, seven generations forward. It's somewhere in our lineage." And Drumpf, for whatever his name was back then in Germany, has reincarnated for us to forgive Hitler and for us to say that we are not going to be consummated in a fascist regime again. Never again will we do that goose step. Never again will we say as women, take me as your woman. Never again. Women are leading. Grandmother's dreams are leading. The mayors, the prime ministers, the great teachers. We are now needing to listen to grandmothers because we're holding the core of this earth. We're holding a account. We're holding the cristal, a mineral, a piedra, que es ancestros. We're holding that first fire. And so when I was in Peru and Bolivia, I received many attunements. Life is never over, you know? It's a series of initiations. I don't ever think that I'm finished. I'm, I may complete one piece so I can get to Costa Rica, but then there's always something else. <laughs> So it's a continuum like the river flowing. It's the medicine of a woman. You know, every 28 days we bleed. For me, I hold my moon. But I work with women who are bleeding. So every 28 days there's an end to a cycle, but then there's a beginning. And I offered to men, you also have a cycle, not just a seasonal cycle of the sun, but you are influenced by the wombs of women. You are influenced by the lunar calendar. You are influenced by what Jose Argulis has given that this is the time that the newosphere and the biosphere has come together. And so when we go into that oneness, that one sphere that consummates all of us, and we rise to that place called nature and Pachamama, that's who we are. They redefined what the game plan was. And in that moment, all hell broke loose on the other side, mace and dogs and barbed wire fences and the poor me and the victimization and the old paradigm raised its head to see if the prayer and the blessing was strong enough to unify all. To see, this is the test, to see if we can drop out of the mind of air into the fire of our sexuality and co-creativity, into the womb of water, into the body of the earth and see that we're neurons and cells in the body of Gaia to see inside each other with a kocha, to see inside each other the great spirit of Wonk and Panka, to know our holiness and our sacredness. And it doesn't require a pulpit, a church or a cathedral to be built on top of sacred lands. It does not require a bulldozer to go through the sacred sites where the ancestors' bones are laid. It requires a symphony orchestration. It requires each of us serve as instruments with sound, with a frequency, with do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, so, vigio. It requires the harmonic attunement to the heavens, to the skies, and to the earth. And no more talking. And so my experience with that proclamation, as I now still hold another 15 of them, and I will carry some to Costa Rica with me, is that not everyone's ready to smoke this pipe. Not everyone is blended so perfectly with the eagle vision and the condor principles. Not everyone is willing to be a rainbow serpent, and with one with wings in the Quetzalcoatlet. Not everyone can carry the three of one. The mother, father, God is one. We need to use these kinds of experiences and expressions to say, come to us. Find your elders in your community. Find your abuelos. Find your grandmothers. Find the wisdom keepers. We're hidden jewels. I'm not so hidden. I'm actually quite out there. And now I'll be even more out there. But I am empowering grandmothers to come. You know, Maestra Martina in Rauchi, in this beautiful temple of Rauchi, she was born and raised there, four and five generations of people who were guardians there. The Peruvian Cultural Institute took over that temple. And she was told, her family was told, her uncle's house was burnt down. They were told, get out. We want to make this a tourist recreational place. It was a sacred site. What are we doing to the sacred? We 
we must embrace with confession done for seven generations. What have we done to women? What have we done to the earth? What have we done to water, air, fire? What have we done with our sexuality? We have a direct mirror in North America right now. We have our beautiful new prime minister, but French and Catholic in his essence. And now we have DT, for lack of a better word. And I'm just going to bless him because he came from a mama too. But we have two beautiful examples of principal executors of either the Constitution of the United States of Being and the foundational teachings of the great northern country called Canada. We have more expanse in our north than we have people in our south. We have so much place forest to expand into, so much pure water, so much unextracted mineral rights, and we must protect that. We must stand for the forest. We must stand for old growth. We must know that this symbol is really the core of a tree. We came from that center. So how do these teachings get passed on? Don Cerillo, wandering wolf from the Guatemalan highlands, passed on a transmission when I was in Bolivia. He said, you carry this staff of power. And I thought he was talking to Flora del Mayo because that's another grandmother in the 13 grandmothers that I'm very akin to. And he said, no, no, you carry a staff of power. You have reclaimed the personal power. And so what is that? It's my spine. It's the Kundalini, the coiled serpent that rises up, the life force that rises up my spine. The path of ascension is not for everyone. It can create great delusion, delusions of grandeur. It can create a lot of psychosis. So we really need to be aware in this teaching at this time right now, you must find your Sangha, your community, your teachers. You must find your elders who are already there. We know the path of initiation. We know the need for purification and we know the need for reintegration. In order to give your gifts back to your community from whence you come, you must stay in Costa Rica in an Aboga retreat in Ayahuasca retreat, in Urubamba, in the Sacred Valley. You must stay in Africa, in Gabon, until you're fully integrated. Until you're aware of what are the steps that you're going to take when you go back. And how are you going to integrate and give? You're not there to change someone. You're coming back with love from the ceremonies, the purification of the sweat lodges, from the pipa, from the dances, from the vision quests. You're coming back with love. And you ought to be walking as your personal fire, as your vision and your dream. And you ought to be able to live this way because the children are watching you behind you and the old ones who've walked in front of you are saying, this is what I expect of you. Nothing more and nothing less. I expect you to be a being of impeccability, mindfulness, integrity and breath. Because when you die, you're just a vibration. You're just a standing wavelength. When you die, there'll just be a sonar blip on the screen of life. And that's as much as you are. You may be great in your spirit, but you're one little particular of that great vast spirit. And so these teachings are something that every partnership needs to remember. You need to be able to stand in opposition as you move around the wheel of Dharma, the wheel of the elementals. When one or the other takes the oppositional, you need to be able to see you're both leading, but more importantly, you're surrendering up to spirit because spirit led you. And when you have children, you need to conceive of those children in a holy way, in a sacred way. The woman needs to know her 13 wounds. She needs to know her fertility cycle. And when she bleeds for the earth, this beautiful man needs to take care of her because she's bleeding for you. And you came from her. And she is the symbol of the mother and the mother and the mother and the mother. Oistra. She is the symbol of the great egg. And she is now your conception of who you are from man to husband to father. She is the mirror and the initiator of each of those steps on this path. And you are her initiator because she is rooted to the earth and has consummated with her great motherness. When she says yes to you, she is the goddess and you are God. And you are guided by Wankantanka by the Great Spirit, by Wirakocha, your architecture will consummate you 
with the mountains, the landscape, with the valleys, with the rivers, with the ocean. It will take you into the sweat lodge of life. When you're troubled, don't look for counselors. Go to a sweat lodge. <laughs> when you have conversations, set up a teepee and sit on opposite sides of the fire and just dump all your opinion into the fire. And then you'll realize that your spines are straight and that teepee is going to stand because you're standing for that point. But that point of view is not right or wrong. It's simply a view and it will change. As you release that which has inhibited you, confession yields forgiveness. That unhealthy belief of self yields a core essence that is sound in frequency. That harmful behavior, including codependence and addiction, yields an opportunity to realize you're not here to gratify your senses. You're here to purify and to take your stand and hold your staff of power and find your ego and find your vision, and find your condor and smoke your pipe and know that you're sacred and holy. I can't imagine a more beneficial protocol for you two to do this ego condor music, this magic, this technological wizardry. And it's, I look at your symbol and it's like, of course, that's your marriage. On the left side is Ewa, on the other side is Khalil. This is it. And the tree is your refuge. The earth is the greening of your soul body. And if you look deeply, the roots are going to come right out the other side of the earth because the roots go back to space. When your roots are expansive and spacious, you're abundant. Authentica abundancia. Your prosperity is beyond dollars and cents. It's a very limited view of abundance. Very, very limited. And you will always, if you follow these sacred laws and these sacred steps and follow the wheel, you will always have everything you need. It will not be what you want if certain things that you want aren't in the need. It will be what you need in order to fulfill purpose. So these are some of the messages that we have to give as elders and grandmothers. And it's a privilege to carry this feather and to know I have a son in Bolivia and a son here in Alpine, Worcester, British Columbia, Canada, that I have been given the Padma by His Holiness the Dalai Lama. I've been given the peacock feather. And he recognized that, the Amara chief, and he gave me a peacock feather from Chile. So here I have a Chilean being that's gifted me with a peacock feather, and I've been given this from Tibet, and I have the condor feather from Bolivia, and I have the blessings in Peru of the maestros and the maestras, and now I have my eagle son who is carrying the vision, who is my vision, that he be a man who holds himself accountable and responsible, that he is nonviolent, that he is clear, that he is a sacred gift in his sacred body, and it's his sperm and his seed. And now he's blessed us with a granddaughter, and she will carry my genomic. She will carry my codes and my keys. When I look at Talal, I say, huh, brilliant one, how are you? She dives right into my heart. She's brilliant. Of course she's brilliant. And my son last week said, Mom, I, I'm really wondering about her cognitive development. <laughs> I said, that's because you're too analytical. You're not getting down and dirty and playing with her and doing the music and looking at who she is and resonating your frequency of love. Because when she's with me, she sings. When she's with me, she jumps off my lap into the pool. She's not afraid. Yes, she goes down into the water and she goes, blah, 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 blah. and then I pick my legs up and up she rises. She trusts me. She's a whale baby. She's an eagle baby. She's a dolphin baby. She's all of that. She's not cognitively developed. <laughs> That's Piaget's terminology. When you come from the place of village and condor and the eagle medicine and the medicine of shamanism, which is the first place that Tibetan Buddhism rose from, the reality is these children are the ones that are coming back in. They're the elders, they're the medicine people, they're the lamas. You know, in Tibetan Buddhism we say, may I be reincarnated in the West. And when I first heard that I wept, that wow, I chose to be reincarnated from Northern Finland and from Siberia and from Mongolia and from Tibet and of course from the Middle East because my father's lineage is seen the house of Holy Mother Mary and Jesus Christ and then all the way here to Canada to the Great Lakes to Gitche Gume to Lake Michigan Lake Huron Anishinaabe Spirit Lake 
boom, Sault Ste. Marie. What a great place to incarnate in. The middle of four great lakes, Anishinaabe Spirit Lake that went up to James Bay. And it used to be a lake, now it's a river and a series of smaller lakes. So because the cartography of the soul body of Pachamama has shifted, we're in the fifth dreaming now. The fifth dreaming, we're in the time of truth, the time to speak that oneness, to speak that we are this evolution. Of course we are. And when we're gone, we're just a breath, we're a particle. But boy, have I left some strong seeds in young people like you, young people now all over the world, in my own biological grandchildren, my own biological children, we're not limited to the bloodline. Because when we put the bloodline into that one world tree in your symbol, what we see is all roots go to that one tree. Black elk, holy man, Su Oglala. These are great prophecies. These are great teachings. I did not come to share my personal story. My personal story is one small thread in the great story. And we need to put things into perspective now. And so I say to you again, look back at the sacred geometry. See where you are. You see that there's lightning going from one direction to the other and there's a sacred fire in the middle. And there's concentric circles like the middle of an old growth tree, like a redwood tree in Northern California, like a great white pine in Northern Ontario, like a great red oak. These are the sacred teachings that surround us in the forest of our lives. We are not so special and we are unique. It's a time of great paradox. It's a time of really appreciating. No one has ever been created like you or you or me. Like, wow, but that doesn't mean we're special. It means we're unique pieces in this tableau that is currently unfolding a seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. We are healing seven generations and we are the ones we've been praying for. And we are going to ripple seven generations forward. And I won't know the outcome of my work, but I guarantee you I'm so deeply invested that till I die, and I've told my kids, don't worry, I don't want to be put in a rectangular coffin. You don't have to spend $5,000 on encasing me as some kind of metal and putting me into the earth. I'd much rather die and be put on a, on a high sky place in the mountains and let the vultures eat my body. <laughs> Or I'd much rather go out into the bush and let the grizzly bear finish it. So, you know, this is an amazing time to be alive, to provide antidotes of ancient ways to this contemporary consumption, this contemporary eating up of our own souls and eating up of natural resources and eating up of our own. I, I, we're pre-suicidal in North America. It's. It's not crazy, it's insane. But I'm laughing because it's crazy wise to be alive now. You have to be wise and crazy to walk this path. You have to be able to go and, and look at everybody and not judge them and go, well, I was born to love you too. That's a hard job. I might have to take retreat for five days and really be with this before I can find the purification of my love for you. Because you're showing me the dark parts of my own fractures. You know, you're showing me the dark parts of my own lineage. Somewhere back there, I had one of those. So I just want to throw one little piece out. My genetic lineage is connected to Mongolia, to the Genghis and the Kubla Khans. So that was a separation in Buddhism from political mercantile power and spiritual power. And when I did that work with Lama Lanang from Los Angeles, a wisdom keeper from Amdul, Tibet, it only takes two to resolve lineage. So just remember that when you two meet, you're resolving it for your lineage and for your lineage. And you're sitting in a teepee with sacred fire of Tetwari and you're looking at each other and going, this, this is not personal. I am doing this for my lineage. And so when Lama and I did that work, I came to him and I said, I'm no longer a quiet, soft-spoken Tibetan lady. I come to you today as a Mongolian shaman. I come to you with the genetic remembrance and an echo in my soul body that the Buddhists massacred up these shamans and they had us dig this hole 
and they had us go down into that hole and they took bows and arrows and they killed us. And he took me through a remembering of I didn't die on impact. I remembered the weight of all those bodies. My ancestors on top of me and then the, the ground. And so when I looked at that, he was holding on the top. He looked at me with total unconditional love. I'm sorry, we did that, and I love you. And I said, I'm still furious, and you did that, and I don't want to hold it against you anymore. And he showed me the way through unconditional love. And that's, that's the practice of sadhana. It's the practice of the great teaching. Whether we're Christians, Buddhists, Muslims, whether we're shamans, whether we're healers or teachers or architects of the soul, the reality is this is a time of confession. We've done all of this to each other, and it's time. It's over. Enough is enough. Red cedar milk. We can't afford to do any more of this. We must be able to step together and love one another. All the masters have given the same teaching. I love you because I have been loved. I forgive you because I have been forgiven. I confess to you because you have confessed and others have confessed to me. May your feet be kissed. May you bow down to each other. May you hold each other as a holy. You are from one source and one spirit. You are Wankanthanka. You are the great spirit. And don't be confused by gender. You are marrying yourself and your soul and your purpose for all our relations. Om Hey, I felt like I just married you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that was what just happened myself. Thank you for your blessing. Uh, Hey, thank you. So if you want to move these these prophecies forward, it's not enough to talk about the prophecy. It's important to embody the prophecy. And so there are five different things that you can do. Number one is clear your brain of old, pro, old programs. Clear your brain by using the solvegio, the, the Hertzogs, the sound frequencies to clear your brain. The electromagnetic frequency field is traumatized right now. And that's why I'm so grateful that things are going out on Facebook that are blessings, that are PTSD, not survivors, but PTSD trainers, trauma specialists are now downloading what needs to be downloaded. Great teachings are coming forth now. Number two, make sure that if you're working with computers, that you have an altar set up in front of the screen. What I have in front of the screen is amazing pieces here. I have rosy quartz for the roots. I have ayahuasca seed. I have four pieces of rosy quartz. I have oluthro ginseng. I have amazing shungite from Russia that is three million years old. Other things. I have a herbal combination for respirado, for deep breathing, so I remind myself to breathe. And right behind my screen, I have a picture of my boyfriend, Jesua Christos, and he looks like a Finlander, tall, blonde, and blue-eyed. <laughs> As we translated the messengers in whatever way that we needed to translate them. And so it's important to protect ourselves. Number two, the physical body. I did an hour of Jiva Mukti Yoga today. My Shadaranga is like... I got it down. My downward dog is 10 breaths and it's my resting place. You need to physically move. I'm living in a family where these people are on the mountain every day and every weekend the kids are on ski in ski school. Like, can you imagine what kind of warriors this five and seven year old are going to be? Like, whoa, you know, there's no, they said, oh, grandma, when are you going to ski? And I told them and they said, we want to ski with you. And I said, honey, I could never keep up with you. I <laughs> you know. I, I want to go and do the ski doo track. <laughs> I'm going to have to do some snow plowing to make my way down Whistler and Blackcomb. I haven't been on skis for three years. So we're raising these children with this physical fierceness, this physical knowing that this body is tempered by fire and the fire of athleticism. And then we don't soldier. We're warriors. We're athletic warriors. Number three. Interesting that it's the finger. You know, I taught high school and counseled in high school for 14 years. I saw that finger a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but that finger is the finger of nourishment, nutrition. 
It's the finger of assessing what kind of what kind of temperament do you have? What kind of yoga do you need to practice? Five Tibetans, Jiva Mukti. How do you move your Shakti? How do you clear your meridians and work with your acupuncture points? It's your physical body that needs to be nourished, but you need to let go of the inhibitors. And then you need to have a certain amount of light every day. We have so many people in the corporate world in urban settings, they are very, very sick. If you look under their eyes, they have dark, dark splenic rage underneath their eyes. And if you look deeper into their soul bodies, they're not there. They're not seeing you. Even out here, I go on a bus locally from one place to the other, and there's very few of us that are not on our cell phones, even at the end of a skiing day. They're out there on the beautiful mountain, and then what are they doing? They're on their cell phones. There's very few of us looking at each other and going, hey, how was your day today? Sounds like you're Australian. How come an Australian is out here skiing Whistler Blackcomb? You have an Irish accent. Did the Irish invent snowboarding? What are you doing here? You know, so I'm always picking up on the cues of accent and creating conversation. I'm a weaver. I want to make those connections. I, sometimes I feel like I want to stand in the front of the bus and say, all right, we're going to do the next 40 minutes of this bus drive with no cell phones. Listen up here. We're going to look at each other, have conversations, look at the outside. This is an amazing life. Let's put it away. <laughs> so that's that middle finger. And then that fourth one is the emotional finger. We have divided. We have like created two camps. We have divided the heart into the woman's camp and the mind into the men's camp. And so the condor is the heart and the eagle is the mind. And the Quetzalcoatl, this this quotle, this way of speaking from the feathered serpent, this is the way to speak in a rainbow of sound, in a rainbow of truth, in a rainbow of laughter. Now, I'm saying very serious things, but I'm laughing a lot. Be serious and laugh a lot. It digests a lot easier. <laughs> so this ring finger is your married to the heart of your emotions. Your emotions are simply a way of tracking your belief. Your emotions are an indicator that something deeper is happening and it takes you down into your solar plexus to look at what's your need. It takes you down into the umbilicus. Well, what did you absorb from your mother? It takes you down into your womb groin. What was seeded in you by your father when your mummy was pregnant and carrying you? This is a profound teaching. It's a complete embodiment of leadership. If you look around the planet, are there many world leaders who are fully embodying presence besides His Holiness the Dalai Lama? You know, that was an easy guess. We're not going there, we're holding him. Huh? But there, where are the global leaders who are fully embodied, who are fully speaking from presence, from a grounded Hui Yin? And so that marriage to emotion is only one piece of the body. It's only one piece of these dimensions. And then there's energy. And so I, I love that I'm living here and being hosted by a doctor. Our conversations are totally amazing. He's an anesthesiologist and he, he recapitulates his surgery when he comes home because I realized he was bringing the patients home. He was bringing the spirits and the girls were picking them up and I was saying, whoa, okay, tell me, what did you do today? Whose gallbladder did you take out? And he said, how did you know I took a gallbladder out today? Or how did you know I put anesthesia and anesthetics into a gallbladder patient. I said, well, I got it. You know, I can read the field. He's been very, very impressed that I can read the field. <laughs> That's, awesome. That's awesome. I'm a doctor of medicina, mas grande espíritus. You know, we're just field aware. And his awareness was this aware, like very analytical. What do we have to do here? How many drips of this? And, and today I said to him again, after we debriefed all these surgeries for the last three months, I looked at him and I said, you know, you realize every time you look over that mask and you've administered the anest anesthetic and you're looking into the eyes and the soul body of that being, and if they die on that table, your eyes are the last set of eyes that they've seen. Think about that. When you see, when you look, look deeply because you never know what's going to happen. And he was awestruck by that moment of full soul expansion, of true purpose. And then I said, when they rise, you come to their room, and other than the nurses, 
you're the next one they see, but this time without a mask. And they're seeing you unmasked. And you're going in and saying, how are you? You're a midwife. Welcome back. Full anesthetic is a near-death experience. You're saying to them, welcome back. I am so glad you came back. Now think of that ripple. If out of this live streaming, we touched a thousand doctors' lives and they realized that they are practicing near-death experiencing and then welcoming these spirits back into their body and if they knew the chakras and how to reweave the body with the spirit back in with an open heart, what would happen? Think about that. What would happen? Do we really need more hospitalization and more insurance policies? No, we need retraining of doctors. We need spiritual doctors, spiritual midwives. I keep telling him he ought to hire me at his hospital. I ought to be going into those surgical rooms. I ought to be standing there with the archangels and the great shamans and the great teachers and going, all right, take a deep breath in everybody. We're gonna be mindful here. We're gonna put on beautiful Solvagio music in every surgical room. And these people are going to go out and come back and they'll be reintegrated and we'll do therapeutic touch. This is already being done, but I'm just advancing it. And these people are going to come back and go, wow, I got messages to come back. I can hardly wait to meet my wife again. I'm so glad that, that you're here with me, doctor. I want to go see my family again. I'm so glad I'm alive. I want to learn why I had my gallbladder taken out. I want to know why my I have a colon, colostomy. I don't even know the names of all those surgeries. You know, part of my colon was all cut up and I my shit's in a bag. I want to know why I did that. They don't even do any of that debriefing. I want to be there helping, training these people. You, you know why your shit's in a bag? Let's take a good look at your whole life. Let's take a look at how this is. And then we won't have patients anymore. We won't need to have those kinds of hospitals. We'll have integrated teams going out in log cabins out in the bush with the ocean, Big Sur, with Esalen, with beautiful spas. We'll have a gestalt and we'll have an understanding and appreciation that that's just one symptom of something much bigger. Seven generations, seven generations. Much, much bigger. So that's what I'm really excited about. And we are going to be having this on my Facebook page, Karina Natalie Sarinen. And I welcome all the people to respond and or to get in touch with us. We are co-crea avatars on Facebook, C-O-C-R-E-A-V-A-T-A-R-S. And you can remember that this is all about energy. This is all about soul's purpose. You'll learn if you set up a, an ass assignment, if you take on an assignment with me, how to work all of your bodies in all dimensions. Know that you're not crazy if you're out there. It's that your body has some toxicity and your spirit needs to know how to come back after you've detoxified and after you've stood in the fire of your own purification. We have a great team right now. You're welcome to sign up for our newsletter with Sonia, S-O-N-I-A, Primerano, P-R-I-M-E-R-A-N-O, you can attune to these teachings through Dream Freedom Beauty podcast out of Durham, North Carolina with Natalie, N-A-T-A-L-I-E, Born of the Light, Ross. And uh, you, you will see there are two specific integrative paths that I've created for them with them. And one is called Yanantin, the neutral path from the Isla de la Luna in Bolivia, Lake Titicaca. And the second and the latest one is you are the compass point of your life and how to clear your chakra body and stay centered and grounded, connected to the soul star of your purpose. And so those are some resources for you. Because we're working with post-traumatic stress, I encourage you to take a look at PTSD and realize you're not a survivor, you're not a victim, there's no one persecuting you, no one needs to rescue anybody. You need to fully occupy yourself and take a look at some of the literature and the books and the teachings on PTSD and start doing those physical exercises, including jumping and going hoo, 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 for five to 10 to 15 to 25 to six hours. So you can shake it all out and get this configuration that you've absorbed out of your systems. 
take a look at your sacred biology, get a color your biology book, and look at your systems. Know your body well. Don't give the power up to you from your body and your spirit to anyone. You ought to be an equal partner in any time that you go to a healthcare practitioner. You are an equal partner. And most and most and most of all, look to the children. The children and the animals are leading the way. They are mirroring back to us the great teachings, the reflections of this fractal universe. In this holonomy, they are the ones that came in to evolve us. Be humble. Get down with the belly and color with your children. Get down and be coloring your mandalas of life as partners. Really create a family mandala, and it can look like this. But take time to spend hours every single week praying at the table. This family prays at the table every night. We don't hold hands, but I held hands in Tierra Langla and Peru. You know, hold hands, bless your food. Teach your children how to bless the water that they drink. Water is medicine. Teach them when they go across a bridge how to bless the water. Teach your children by modeling leadership in relationship, in home, and return to the qualities and the essences of who you are. There is no government like this. You are sovereign in your own territory, and it starts with your breath, in your heart, in your mind, in your body. May you be whole for all our relations. Omata, omata kuyasa. Thank you so much, Karina, your wisdom, and uh, it's very touching how you describe to us the reflection within and without. And I really look forward to um, taking a lot of what your wisdom uh, to our altar when we get married. You were speaking a lot about the Solfeggio tones. We're actually going to be at Solfeggio retreat. <laughs> so that was a good thing. And... Um, Thank you so much. Is if any of the the links and stuff we can put in the comments for the viewers out there. Uh, I'm Kolo Calves, and this is Evan Ijelski. If you're looking to follow more of um, what the Eagle Condor is doing, you can feel free to reach out with Karina and ask her. We're streaming through her account, but we also have a page, Eagle Condor Media. Where we're covering a lot of regenerative uh, topics, and we're comparing that with elder wisdom and trying to make a new paradigm that gives honor to our ancestors as well as honor to the new uh, star beings who are bringing the regenerative um, information back to our communities, back to the earth, how to grow food, how to live in community, how to create energy without the use of fossil fuels, and all these things that we're all so drawn to at this time. And Grandma Karina, I want to thank you so much because the, the family part of it is very touching to me. And I, I look forward to continuing to integrate this stuff through meditations. And I can't thank you enough for your wisdom. Thank you so much. I love you, and I'll be in Costa Rica February 5th till March 30th. Yay! Yay! We'll see you there soon. Will you Much be going love. to Will you be going to Forest Dance this year? Yes. Are you Amazing. coming? <laughs> Possibly. You know, the possibilities are endless. We're in Costa Rica, so. <laughs> of course. We'll meet you in the Do Re Mi of Solvegio. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. We love you, Grandma Karina. So, so much love to you. Thank you so much for this planet and for this universe. It's our honor. We'll see you soon, I'm sure. Oh, hey. Thank you, loves. Mwah. Thank you for coming and sharing Mwah. your wisdom. <laughs> Medicine.